Hey guys, Fred here. Welcome back to Solid Ground Electronics. It's been quite a while since my last video, and with many university deadlines now behind me, I've returned to talk about my 3D printer enclosure and the things that you should bear in mind when deciding whether you need one. In episode 2, I reviewed the ANET A8 and talked about some of the modifications that I had done to it. The A8 is a great machine for the price, and that video was very informative, so please go ahead and check out that video at the end of this one by clicking the information card top right hand corner of the screen. If you are new to the 3D printing scene, then chances are you won't have heard about the pros and cons of both storing and operating your printer within a dedicated enclosure. There are three main benefits to using an enclosure, the first of which is reduced cleaning and maintenance. Unless you live in a clean room, you will probably find that your printer tends to collect dust on every upwards facing surface. If left uncleaned, this can build up and will result in poor bed adhesion and possibly failed print. While components like the linear bearings often have seals to prevent the ingestion of debris, dust can still find its way in, which over time can lead to excessive wear and their premature death. By keeping both your printer and filament inside of a cabinet, you'll not only reduce the likelihood of this happening, but you'll also help to reduce the risk of clogging your hot end, which is especially important if using a small nozzle diameter, such as a 0.2mm. The second benefit is reduced warping when printing with high temperature materials like PETG and ABS with an open frame machine like the A8. While the amount of warping that a print may have is entirely dependent on the size of the object, thermal expansion of the material being used and bed adhesion, the main contributing factor is a temperature gradient across the print. An enclosure helps by trapping air around the print and allowing the heat bed to warm it up uniformly, thus lowering the temperature gradient. You'll only really notice a performance increase by switching to a small enclosure and less sufficiently insulated. Larger enclosures take longer to warm up, so there can often be no observable difference in quality if you were to compare the use of an enclosure with quick prints. So make sure you get an enclosure that is only just big enough for your printer, so you don't waste time having to wait for it to warm up. The best way to reduce warping is to use lower temperatures when possible, and reduce the print speed to allow the part to cool more gradually. You must bear in mind that the increased temperature will shorten the life of your electronics over time, so it is recommended that you mount your control board and power supply externally if your enclosure gets hotter than 30 degrees C for extended periods of time. The temperature sensitive electrolytic capacitors will thank you. The last benefit is reduced noise whilst printing, which is pretty self-explanatory. This one is important for me as I live in a shared house and often need to print stuff overnight for my university project. You can hack together an enclosure out of pretty much any old piece of furniture, but a lot of people tend to use stuff from Ikea since it's relatively cheap and is often in keeping with your decor. Most common of all is the double lack table enclosure, consisting of two mini coffee tables stacked vertically and surrounded by four hinged perspex panels. This enclosure is easy to make and a great choice since the top and bottom honeycomb structure locks in the heat. While you can use literally anything to do the job, Exhibit A, it is far better to design and build your own. That way, you can make it as big or as small as you like, and add whatever features you want, be it filament holders, viewports, cameras or lights. That said, since I've been so snowed under with work, I cheated, and after a last minute three hour dash to North London on a Friday afternoon, with only minutes to spare before closing and just fumes in my tank, I scored this awesome server cabinet for just £35. That's about $45 for those of you across the pond. Its full metal construction and toughened glass door make it very sturdy, but my favourite feature is the fact that it rolls on caster wheels and all four side panels can be easily removed to gain access inside. My only peeve about this solution is the fact that it's quite low down to the ground, so fixing a filament jam is a right royal pain in the butt. Another downside of this case is the fact that it's poorly insulated, so it won't be that useful for printing with ABS. After all, it was designed to keep computers and audio equipment cool. To get round this, I took some self-adhesive foam door sills and went round every panel. I also removed the spare shelf and used it to block the massive ventilation hole at the top of the case. Part of the reason this cabinet was such a good score was the fact that the advert said there was no keys included. Yet I found some taped up inside out of the way, obviously as a spare key, so definitely check that if you end up buying one. 
add a bit of pizzazz to the drab and dreary grey paint, I wired up some WS2812B LED strips and put them on the inside, shining into the case to add a colour changing glow throughout. I made sure to pick the 12 volt version so that I could power them from the ANET 12 volt power supply. I drove them with an Arduino Pro Micro and the code, which is available on my website via the link in the description, to add a colour wheel effect that cycles through a range of colours. Unfortunately, my camera doesn't capture it too well, so you're going to have to take my word for it, but it does look pretty good. I think a white light above the print bed might have been more useful though. Well guys, I think we've come to the end of this video. If you've got any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below, as I'm always looking for feedback on my videos. Also, if you've encountered any problems or print quality issues, you may want to join the ANET A-Series 3D Printer Help and Discussion Group, as well as the Custom ANET 3D Printers Group. These are great resources if you do encounter problems, so I recommend that you join them, links to which are in the description. Now if you're a cosplayer, or are interested in large-scale 3D printing, you'll definitely want to subscribe to be notified of my upcoming Creality CR10 video review. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.